I want to bring in Brandon Hogan. He's an associate professor of philosophy at Howard University here in Washington. Professor, uh, thanks for joining us. I want to get your reaction to this idea of reparations for black Americans in this country. Hello. Uh, I think it's an idea that is long overdue. Um, we know that uh, right after the Civil War, there was a proposal to give um, former slaves land that was confiscated from uh, the um, Confederate uh, slaveholders. Um, that never materialized. The U.S. gave an apology in 2009 for slavery, but did not come with material benefits. Um, so I think it's a very simple calculation. Uh, it's the case that many, the ancestors of many black Americans worked for free, and they are owed money. Or their ancestors are owed money. So I think the idea is simple. I think the idea is right uh, and long overdue. Um, we just have barriers to getting it done. So as you mentioned, this idea hasn't materialized in the past. So the big question is, will the George Floyd tragedy finally get this idea into a concrete plan of action? And how do you do that on a federal level? We're talking about 47, roughly 47 million black Americans in this country. Uh, so I try to be optimistic, but I think deep in my heart, I am pessimistic about the op uh, possibility of reparations. I think it is the case that in 2019, uh, around 29 percent of Americans agreed that African Americans were owed reparations. Um, that still leaves a large percentage of Americans who, do, who disagree. Um, I think it's the case that many uh, white Americans don't want to face up to the guilt that comes with slavery and don't think that they um, benefit uh, materially from the legacy of slavery. Uh, so I think on the federal level, it will be very hard, uh, given that most of America um, is not in favor of reparations. And a lot of this, of course, goes back to unpaid labor, labor during slavery and post-slavery discrimination. Um, in your opinion, even if something like this um, does happen, does it really erase centuries of injustice, centuries of um, discrimination? I mean, it, 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 money doesn't really solve everything, does it? It doesn't. Um, so perfect justice would look like going back in a time machine and stopping slavery from happen happening. Imperfect justice looks like making it as close as possible the case that it was as if slavery did not happen. So money is only one aspect of that. Um, but there's also a sense in which uh, money is owed. Um, so I owe um, my university certain money for student loans. Uh, and that's just a fact that's separate from the emotional um, and, and uh, spiritual toll of um, borrowing money or um, stealing money. Uh, so I think the baseline is money. The United States has already apologized. There's a certain sense in which apologies are hollow if they do not come with material benefits in an attempt to erase the legacy of slavery. And finally, Professor, are we at a turning point in this country where we're going to see real and substantial change in attitude toward racism? I think we will see changes in attitude, um, but problematically, racism um, has many faces and many guises. Um, there's a very great book by um, the law professor Michelle Alexander titled The New Jim Crow that details how um, the Jim Crow laws um, of the 60s have reemerged in, term, in terms of mass incarceration. Uh, so I think Americans will have to be very smart and thoughtful about how racism morphs going into the future. I think George Floyd's killing in the current Black Lives Matter movement puts us in a better position to grapple with the past. Um, I just hope we are mature enough to do so.